Well, hello there. This is Vichar's Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Recently, I got to play this game against a slightly higher rated British opponent. Uh, we're now so chess.com friends, and they led with the Vienna. Vienna is my favorite opening, and so I feel I know a little bit about the Vienna, including an approach which is an anti Vienna. I use the Bardelieven variation in the main line. Let's go take a look. So, my opponent with white pieces leads with the Vienna. e4, e5, knight c3. What do I do? Well, I play the fork bid, knight f6, basically baiting the opponent to play a Vienna gambit. So they play the Vienna gambit f4, and against that, always the main line d5. Here it crunches the line to a particular line. There's only one good move for white, which is basically to capture, attack the knight, I move capture the pawn, and there's a tension, and the single most common response here, which is also the best response for white, is the pawson attack with queen to f3. Single most common move, particularly at the beginner intermediate level. And here, the best move for black, it's practically an anti-Vienna because, because of how difficult it becomes to play for the player with the white pieces, is f5. And the idea here, in the, uh, in the main line, in the Bartelieben, what we want to do is we really want to prevent white from defending that e pawn on e5. We really want to avoid that. If possible, we want to undermine their center, because once we take control of the center, it's often very difficult to play for white. We've got some other tactics as well. So the queen to h4 with check is always potentially available in case they don't properly defend their king. Uh, potentially, you know, we can try to damage their queenside pieces. Now here, white plays the single best response, which is d3. According to Stockfish, this is the best response, but I would argue this is really hard for white to play. In fact, I usually, in this position, with the white pieces, I play the Hade variation, which is the immediate d4. I immediately control the center. Now, with d5, even though that's technically the best move, it disconnects the defense of the knight by the queen, which means we can now capture knights, trade knights, knight captures knight, and they're forced to capture back with the b pawn. And so we're left now, well, white is left now, with doubled c pawns, damaged queenside pawns, and to avoid white from playing a d4, where they will build a really powerful uh, central pawn complex, we jam our pawn forward with d4. And here, again, it just looks like white is forced down a particular line. Capture, um, so here they, they can capture, and we capture back with queen. Here they decide to develop the knight first. Um, here we develop our knight, capture, capture, with an attack on the queen, capture, and now capture with queen, and notice it is a fork of the rook and the uh, e5 pawn. e5 pawn cannot be defended. They move their rook, we capture now with check, uh, they decide to block with the bishop. Actually, it's probably better for white to block with queen and, in fact, to trade queens. And basically, we then um, you know, get a much, much better uh, middle game because we don't have damaged pawns. We're ready, potentially, to castle after a little bit of development on either side. So this is the, uh, the way of playing the Bardelieben variation in the main line. Often, we're doing really, really well. Here, develop, getting ready to castle. Uh, they decide to bring an attack on the queen. Here, I wasn't entirely sure what was the best approach. So the best way to play is actually queen to a5 with an absolute fork, so check, an absolute fork also of the a2 pawn. That would have been best. I didn't see that in game. I wasn't sure whether or not to play that move. I felt like maybe I wanted to control the center. So instead, I played bishop to b4. See, Stockfish calls it a bit of a mistake. White actually gets a little bit ahead, but it's just easier to play for black. It almost doesn't matter. It's a check. They're forced to move the king. 
king now forever stuck exposed in the center. And now the bishop to c3, which was my idea, uh, blocking the line, potentially more trades. So here they decide to do that. That's fine. I now short castle, get my king out of center. There's not going to be a pin of my queen against the king. Captures, captures, queen here, king exposed, always in the center. Now I do have a little bit of a development problem with that bishop, but potentially I'm doing fine. So basically equal, zero, zero, zero but I would argue it's easier to play for black. And notice here, I've almost used no time, still 15 minutes, this was a 15 pl uh, minute plus 10 second increment game. White, you will see, has to spend a lot of time thinking through every move, and that makes a difference. They developed their queen with check, that's good, move the king out, uh, and yes, it's correct, they do need to infiltrate, I think, with their queen and the rook, and here I should have pulled my queen back to consolidate, I decided to be aggressive, this wasn't the best approach, because yes, queen can now move forward, it's not so easy to get rid of that queen. Now I move that rook, obviously, out of the attack of the queen, that's fine, king are nice and safe, still basically equal, they play a waiting move, notice, four and a half minutes left. Here I bring my queen all the way back, I wanted to potentially trade, not so optimal for me, but they didn't want to trade. And that's perfectly fine for me, you can see, by not trading, it's actually now worse for white. Back to equality. Here I decide to thrust my pawns forward, right idea, wrong execution, apparently the g5 pawn, the g pawn was better. Uh, here they do a little bit of a shuffle with their queen, um, that's fine, with an attack here, I bring my bishop here, Stockfish says this way is better, and it basically has to do with um, potentially uh, if white tries to attack the bishop, uh, there's a potential way after a shuffle. Um, no, so yes, if the, if the bishop is here, the queen potentially goes here to try to trade queens. I can opt not to trade queens by moving the queen to d4, which still defends the bishop, because queen, of course, to e7 has an attack on that bishop. So that's why that square was a little bit better. Pretty obscure. White needed now to infiltrate with their pieces, but two minutes left. Really hard to see. That's fine. Uh, potentially they're sort of looking at, you know, maybe uh, some sort of uh, double attack, but that's fine. These pawns now defend that chain. They try to attack with the pawn, but that's basically a mistake because after captures, they can't capture this way because the bishop is pinned to the rook. They capture this way, that's fine, and now I have an opportunity. With the bishop not controlling and not infiltrating, I can now control the e-file with my rook. And here, you know, white, under two minutes now, they're starting to have, you know, concerns, real concerns, and they decided to pull the queen back so that they wouldn't have to think quite as hard with the defense of their king, and this gives me an opportunity to counterattack. So I play queen e6. Stockfish calls this an inaccuracy, they think queen to d6 is better, but if you look at the stockfish moves, there's a whole bunch of slow shuffling moves. I thought this was potentially fine. Firstly, there's a battery, though admittedly that doesn't do very much, but I also have a battery attacking that pawn on a2. They move the pawn, however, queen now to a2 with a fork of the rook and the pawn. Uh, here they needed to move the king, difficult to see in time scramble. They snuggled the rook against the king, connecting the rooks would have been better because now I take, so I'm now up a little bit. Uh, they now find quite a good move actually, and I did see that this was a problem. So with an attack there, and if they get a rook or a queen to the h-file, that now becomes pin. So I'm potentially in a bit of trouble. So here I decided with their minute left, I'm not going to make it easy for them to calculate. I decide to sacrifice my rook. A rook captures the bishop, and I've calculated if they take this way, my idea is to try to get rid of these central pawns, because these pawns basically help defend the king. I want to strip away those defenders, uh, then I thought I would potentially have a win. This is actually a blunder according to Stockfish. And you can see Stockfish actually wanted to trade my two rooks for the opponent's queen. That 
you know, I just wasn't sure about that. I'm not sure I even considered that move, to be perfectly honest, in the game. The reason why this is a blunder is that at very high depth, stockfish can actually find a mate in 20. However, when you've got a minute left on the clock, you're not going to find a mate in 20. Basically, it starts with queen infiltrating to f6 with check. Uh, they've got a battery there. That's what they had to do. They didn't see it. Instead, they captured as I expected them to do. And this is a serious mistake because I can now give an immediate check. Now, I didn't give this check because I thought that after that move, the king can somehow run here and it's still defended by the pawns, I thought. So I opted not to do that. So I immediately captured right away. I was trying to move quite quickly because I didn't want my opponent thinking on my time. I think if I did think a little bit more, uh, a little bit longer, I would have probably played rook d8 check. However, I took that piece. That's still potentially okay. However, you can see it's zero, zero, zero. And the reason for that is white can force basically a three-fold repetition and force a draw. They find it. Queen to f6 with check, and basically king forced here, and now they can basically just shuffle those two squares, and it's three-fold repetition. It's a draw. They give a check. However, that's a fork. They were looking at material. One of the things is, you know, after that capture, they were thinking, maybe I can, you know, if I win the, if I win the bishop, then it's the rook pair uh, and the queen versus queen and rook. That potentially is winning. They so move my king, they capture. <laughs> See, that's a blunder. And that's a blunder because well, rook to d8 is basically mate. Uh, it's uh, effectively an ladder, ladder mate. They can block with queen and then that's the end. Now in the game, I didn't in the game I didn't see that because again I was trying to play very quickly. So I immediately played queen captures a pawn uh, with check. And again, my tactic already is I wanted to clear the center pawns, the center white pawns, expose the king. The king is potentially trapped on this side of the board because these pieces block its movements. And I thought here I could do a ladder mate. So king moves forward. Now, can't let the king escape this way. So queen back, check, king forced in this direction. And now, unfortunately with their queen in that position, it's completely hemmed in, it cannot provide defense. A rook to e8 with check, king forward. And now rook jumps forward, rook e3 with check this way, queen with check, king back. And here I actually had a mate with rook to e2. Again, I didn't see it in the game. Uh, um, but instead I thought, look, there's just a plain ladder mate pattern there. So I just went with that pattern rather than looking for more, uh, a more beautiful and a neater uh, mate. But queen here defending the rook. This is a ladder mate pattern. King, forced, check, and mate. Very, very lovely. I love playing the Bartle even variation. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is to try the Bartleben variation in the main line as an anti-Vienna approach. It's very, very fun to play. It's uh, quite good and you will, it will make you a better Vienna game player. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.